Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the editor in chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm with Skip Ashton of Infineon. We're going to talk today about the new matter standard. Skip, what is the matter standard and where did it come from? So, matter is a new uh, application layer protocol for the smart home. And it really came from uh, meshing together of a variety of different things uh, from this fragmented smart home that we have today, where Apple doing their home kit and Google Home and Amazon really using Zigbee uh, and putting those things together to try and agree on a, a more universal standard for the smart home to kind of get the smart home out of the doldrums and get it moving. And this is the same problem that people dealt with for years with their remote controls, right? It's like you, nothing ever worked together. That's right. And uh, so unfortunately, there's an XKCD on this, right? Of uh, We've got 14 incompatible standards. So the right thing to do here is to make a 15th. But what we really have is there was some very strong ecosystems in the smart home that I just mentioned, uh, and, and people are familiar with them. You can throw Comcast in there with their Xfinity home. You can throw, uh, we already talked about Amazon, but Samsung Smart Things has a pretty good smart home uh, presence. And even Ikea and Philips have their own with their lighting and TradFi from, uh, so all of those things really have their own ecosystems, but it's part of what stalls the smart home is when I go to buy a product, what do I get? Uh, what do I have? And does it work with what's already in my home? And, and that's confusing for consumers and device makers. And so Matter was really built to fix that problem. Let's take a closer look. Sure. Skip, what are we looking at? This is really to give people an idea. And, and many people, uh, those of us that have played with a smart home are familiar with this, some of the common products you saw. If uh, you asked Google and you looked at what was available, there's a nice uh, view of some of the products available. Apple, similarly with HomeKit, had a nice spread of products there. And then Amazon works with Alexa, had an even broader spread of products. But wh what's clear is you have a limited set of products in each of these ecosystems. So if you have a product you particularly like and you want to add, it may or may not be supported by the ecosystem you're using in your home. And so large manufacturers, Philip is, is a good example, they were using Zigbee and they bridged into all of these through cloud to cloud connections. And that's, that's fine. They have the capability to do that. They're a big company, but that can get broken when clouds get updated and things like that. And then they have to come in and fix it. And so consumers don't see interoperability here, right? They see some limitation on what they can buy. They see a limitation on how they can use it. And sometimes it doesn't work. And then it gets a software update and it does or somebody discontinues some APIs in it, it doesn't start working again. And so that's a problem for, for people. And that's part of the reason the smart home really hasn't hit widespread penetration in homes is because consumers have a bad experience, they have interoperability problems, and they say, well, this just isn't ready for prime time. Where does matter actually fit into the smart home? So matter was really built to unify the smart home. And it's a standard communication protocol built on IP. So the initial launch here is with Ethernet, Wi-Fi, and Thread. And it's really intended to unify these devices across these different ecosystems. So we see a lot of devices. They're starting to launch now. It's very exciting. And you've got common messaging. You've got common commissioning. You've got common security. And so what that means for a device maker is I can build a device and it's gonna work across these ecosystems, which is a real advantage for device makers, right? Instead of making all these different flavors. And for consumers, of course, this is a huge advantage. I can go buy a device and I can say, well, you know what? I've been using this uh, on HomeKit and that's fine. Or I can decide I don't want to and switch it to another ecosystem, which really hasn't been possible uh, prior to this without you know, some amount of gymnastics from the poor user. And you see things with Matter where uh, Samsung Smart Things and Google Home, for example, uh, announced being able to you know, bulk move devices between their ecosystems for consumers, depending on how they wanted to use them. And these sorts of things were really hard to do in the past and Matter has made them easier because the devices are standard and supported across these different ones. 
You mentioned security in here. Does security get better because you have one system that, as opposed to many, or is it better to have it broken up? Security gets better because you have one system, but more importantly, security gets better because matter made a very fundamental choice to improve the security of the system, where we have full device cycle and life cycle management. So the device has a certificate on it that uh, identifies the device. When you're commissioning a device, you can go to the blockchain that the CSA is maintaining to see that this is a valid matter device that has been certified. So you know you're bringing a known device onto your system. When that device joins the system, it's given an operational certificate so that other devices in the system can trust it. And more importantly, devices have access control lists. So you need to tell your door lock, this device is allowed to control you. So you know your controller in your home is allowed to open your door, but your light bulbs probably don't have that authority. So if they're sending an unlock message, the door lock is going to ignore it. So if somebody was able to hack into them, but of course, Matter also mandates software updates over the air, signed software updates, so you're not getting malicious code. And that ensures that we can have bug fixes and improvements in the future. So Matter really raised the bar on IoT device security, which is you know, important in today's day and age. We've all learned these lessons, and now we see a full and complete implementation here of kind of very standard security best practices for these IoT devices. And this has been one of the big concerns in the whole market too, right? Because you think about how some of the hacks that have happened, some of them have come through from things like the security camera or potentially even the battery backup for solar panels. That's right. And you know, the fundamental problem here is when you put devices on your home network, an insecurity in that device may expose your home network. And your home network, of course, has your phone on it, your computers on it, and things like that. So, you know, many people would recommend you segregate your networks and put all your IoT devices on a different network. Uh, but that, of course, for the average consumer is a problem because my phone uh, is often being used to control things and it's on my home network, not on some IoT network. And so you get into, yes, uh, the expert user can bridge those networks and do fun things, but the average consumer isn't going to do that. So by setting a baseline of security in these devices to make sure they're secure, it's also protecting your home network when you put these devices on it. Is it just the home or can this now be used in other areas as well, other markets? So Matter 1.0 here was really targeted at the smart home. But of course, we have users out there who are interested in the factory. They're interested in commercial building and small businesses and things like that. And so we're going to see it used across these other areas and extended further into them, particularly as time goes on here. What's in the, the, the new launch that you're talking about? Matter 1.0 launch is very exciting because we traditionally have released a specification and we've released you know, testing harnesses and testing protocols around that. But Matter is more than that. So yes, we have the specification for the core spec and the application clusters and the device library, but we have an open source SDK. This is in GitHub. It's got a lot of platform support, different operating system support. So device makers don't have to feel constrained. They can go up and start playing with it on their own. And any developer can because it's in GitHub. And we've got the full test specification, a test harness and test script. So it makes it much easier for developers, device makers to get started with it, play with it at home, run test scripts at home, run the test harness at home before they go to it. And of course, as part of the launch, we've now expanded the test labs available because we're seeing many more devices come through certification. We've updated our policies and procedures around it. We have this distributed compliance ledger, which is a brand new thing to allow a commissioning device or a controller to validate that a device, as I mentioned earlier, was certified. Or for example, there's a new software update for a device and that new software update will get certified and entered into the blockchain so you can check on that. We have device certificate policies for how these are in, how they're protected and things like that. And we have a full developer community out there. We've had hundreds of developers working on this SDK and now you can see them answering questions on it. So it's really uh, kind of exciting at launch here to have that already out there and available for people. And of course, we've got Matter 1.0 devices already hitting the market. They're being announced. We've got big announcements ongoing around this really since a month ago. And 
we have a new thing really, which is matter one of those software applications. So, you know, CSA is traditionally focused on devices, but as part of matter, we have controllers and commissioners and these tend to be software applications, right? So unbeknownst to you, your iOS update now includes matter. Your Android update includes matter. Samsung is putting it in their TVs, right? So if you think of in the smart home today, you know, your Alexa devices, your smart speakers, through a software update, millions of devices are being enabled with matter to commission and control these devices without consumers even realizing it. So this is a huge step forward, both for the smart home ecosystem, but really for device makers and, and consumers to say, oh, this is available to me. It's standard. I have it in my home already, and I didn't even do anything. There's still going to be a class of devices, though, that will not take advantage of this. They may be too old or they may just be proprietary, right? That's right. And so we, we already see that, uh, you know, devices can get upgraded to matter in the field if they have sufficient memory to take the new software and things. But if they don't, you've seen announcements from companies saying that they're going to put bridges. So matter 1.0 includes a bridge specification. So, for example, existing Zigbee devices show up through a bridge and look like matter devices. So they'll show up in your controller. You'll be able to control them like matter devices, even though they're going through a bridge. So Philips Hue, for example, I've mentioned has a you know very large population of deployed bulbs. Those will all show up as matter devices through their bridge. And again, they'll push a software update out to their bridge, so you won't even realize it, and those are available to you. That's the power of you know being able to do these sorts of software updates with these existing devices. Do you foresee this ever entering into the automotive space where you have a car and now you can swap devices? It doesn't really matter. We've had people ask about uh, car interactions more because your car interacts with your home uh, many times when you pull up. You'd like it to. You'd like it to potentially open the garage door, change temperature settings, change security system settings. And so we have people asking you know, can I interact with my EV charger automatically when I pull up with my home and things like that? You know, interior to the car communications is, is yet another thing because of some of the constraints there in the automotive market. As of today, what devices are supported and where do you see that going? So Matter today has really focused uh, in the 1.0 release on the most popular devices in the smart home. That's lighting, you know, uh, some of the smart plugs and things like that, thermostats, door locks, safety and security sensors, uh, window blinds, and we did add uh, TVs and then, uh, as I mentioned, bridges. So those are all supported in 1.0. They're in the open source SDK today. We have active teams working on appliances, right? Your, your white goods, your you know, washer dryer ranges. Uh, we have robot vacuum cleaners underway, doorbells and IP cameras in the home. Energy management is obviously a huge issue. Uh, not just for EV charging, but solar, energy consumption monitoring across your white goods or HVAC and things like that. We've also got use case teams looking at access points, more for control and monitoring of them. Obviously, those are Wi-Fi based, but you can control and monitor them better. Ambient sensing in the home, as well as smoke and CO. So, you know, very active use cases for Matter 1.x, you know, be it 1.1, 1.2 release timing on many of these things. How wide is the support for this from the industry? We have, uh, CSA, you know, has already said they've got the broadest support we've ever seen in launching a standard. We've had the largest test events we've ever had. And, you know, we've had the most devices coming through certification already. And I believe part of that is this strong support from these ecosystems. That, that have worked very hard over the past three years to bring the standard to fruition. That support convinces device makers that they should be supporting matter. And so you see a lot of device makers coming into matter over the past few years from these devices we just talked about, thermostat manufacturers, the door lock manufacturers. These folks had either proprietary systems or they were building multiple you know, products to support different protocols because the way the smart home was fragmented. And so they look at matter and say, if it's going to be supported by all of these common ecosystems, as a device maker, suddenly I can reduce the number of products I need to build. I can reduce the amount of software maintenance I need to, to you know, work on. And more importantly, 
I have a decision on do I need to build an application myself to commission these devices to control them? I can, but I can also let HomeKit do that. I can let Google Home do that. And I can have my extensions, my additional features on top of that if I want, but I can really now mix and match how I want to play and do the software development across the full life cycle from device to smart app to cloud. Do you foresee a day when we won't have a, you get your cell phone now and it says, oh, I need 27 updates for <laughs> in one week. Now it's going to come through the home and say, we need one update for all this stuff. Unfortunately, if you look at an OS on a phone or you know some of these gateways or controllers and things like that, there are so many individual pieces of software in there that need to be coordinated uh, that you're going to continue to see that. And of course, I, I view it uh, somewhat on the smartphone today. We're used to this, right? We, we get a little notice saying this app is updating. And the nice thing is we're so used to that on our smartphone and we're really not used to it on our devices. You know, your light bulb doesn't ask you that very much, your thermostat or things like that because they don't update nearly as often, thank goodness, right? But they're, they now have a path to do this through Matter that makes it easier. So we all know software updates are critical for new features, for bug fixes, for security fixes, uh, even you know, just an advancing things in the home. And so we want to see more of these software updates, and this makes it easier for everybody to do it. So where do you see this going and when do you see it going? I mean, it sounds like you've got a lot of buy-in, you've got a lot of opportunity here, it, and, but it's an enormous space that just keeps growing and growing with more and more connected devices. I, I think that is very true, Ed. And so the question is, where are we going to be in a year? And I think all of us who've been working so hard on Matter for three years, it's actually difficult for us to say. People have had their heads down so hard for three years to get this released. And we all know, you know, people complained about it being delayed and we didn't get it done in time. It's first specification ever that wasn't done on the time it was said, right? But we know how hard it was to get here. And now I think everybody is really waiting to see the market uptick on this, right? We're seeing great signs. We're, we're a month into this and we're seeing great announcements, great support from the industry. And the question becomes, does the consumer see the impact? Because that's what's going to make the difference here, right? I liken the smart home and the consumer is using it. Everyone has a different device they want to start with. I needed a smart lock or I wanted a smart thermostat, right? Or I liked the smart lighting. If they have a good experience with the first device they try, they're more likely to try another. If on the other hand, they spend three hours arguing and fighting with getting the device on their network, or two weeks later, the device is acting flaky and doesn't work all the time, or their you know, spouse or children are complaining because the device doesn't work all the time, then they're less likely to add more devices. And so we know this is matter 1.0. You know, It's 1.0 for a reason. It's the first release of it. We've been working on it very hard. Will it have issues? Of course it will but we have a very dedicated group of engineers that are continuing to make progress on it. We talked about all the new use cases and things, but we expect we'll have bug fixes, we'll have security updates, right? All these sorts of things as it rolls out to market here. If we address those and the consumers can have a good experience, they have clean commissioning, it's smooth and it's simple and it's supported by their ecosystem. And we're seeing this already in our testing with the things that have hit the market, right? You can get a software update, you can get your Matter device, you can install it and commission it, and it just shows up on your phone. It really is very smooth and clean from what we're seeing. But of course, we've been working on this a long time. So if the consumer sees a good experience there, we think over the next year, you're going to see more and more smart devices, and you'll see more and more device manufacturers saying, wait a minute, I better get involved with this. And that's what we expect. And much less frustration in terms of commissioning a new router or TV to set up on your home network too, right? That's right. And that's a big part of the that's a big part of the problem here, right? If you bring home a device, and I've done this, right? I, I like to say I've installed and removed more smart home systems than I want to talk about, right? And my poor wife will say, 
why are you still fighting with that system three hours later, right? And I'm like, oh, I'm just trying to get the installation and it's not quite working. It didn't get the credentials or it's not letting the device join or things like that. That frustrates people and doesn't make them want to buy that next device, right? And, and if I'm the IT support for my house, it's a problem when I'm on, a, on the road or I'm traveling or we've got a visitor at the house and the system's not working. Like we have a certain expectation as consumers. When I tell a light to go off, it goes off right? There is no other choice. And it's great you have a wireless light. It has to behave the same. And so we have a real opportunity here with consistent commissioning processes, a common SDK where we're all working together on the same thing. So we're finding and fixing the same bugs rather than everybody having independent implementations. We have a real opportunity here for the market to really see that and grow with it. And that's what we expect over the next year. Skip Ashton, thanks for a great explanation. Thank you, Ed.